so it's um a nice rainy morning not that i'm complaining because the grass has started coming through which is great um and the more rain the better at the moment it's just been so dry for so long so um yeah, so it's really nice to have a bit of heavy drizzle coming down. And today I am taking Ilforbio, otherwise known as Elf, to the vets to have his dental checkup. So when I first got him, he um, it was in lockdown. My dentist uh, friend came over to check his teeth and he was very, very wary about having his mouth touched. And she did notice that he had an unerupted wolf tooth um, that she thought would need to come out. But because it was locked down, the vets weren't doing anything other than emergencies. So it took quite a long time for me to be able to book him in to actually get that looked at properly at the vets where they've got the stocks and he could be sedated to really get a good look at it. Um, so he lived with it for quite a while over lockdown and was quite sort of busy in his mouth and he was getting more and more fussy about the bridal going on. So it was really great when I was able to finally take him into the vets and get that looked at. Um, it was not a very nice treatment for him because when he went in, they sedated him and it turns out he's very, very resistant to the sedative. So he ended up having quite a lot of doses of sedative and they got halfway through trying to remove this unerupted wolf tooth and then the vets rang me and said they wanted to keep him in overnight because they were worried that if they kept giving him more sedative he could colic. So uh, he ended up staying in overnight unexpectedly so that they could then re-sedate him the next day and get the rest of this tooth out. So it was all a bit of a palaver and he didn't get them raft as much as he might have done on a normal appointment because you know all the focus was on trying to get this horrible embedded unerupted wolf tooth out um and it was so sharp it was like a little needle sticking up underneath the gum and that the gum had gone really really um sort of tough and fibrous where it had been this tooth had obviously been underneath for quite some time causing irritation so yeah i was really glad we got that out and um, i'm hoping today they'll be able to give him a really good grasp and get any sharp edges off and hopefully that's going to improve him in the mouth um, because yeah he is still quite fussy in the mouth so I'm hoping this is the next step to making him a bit more comfortable uh, so yes and they do the vets are really good they do like a clinic day where they include the sedative as part of the price so um, it's like a set price to take him in so that's why I'm going today and hopefully he'll everything will go to plan and I'll be able to finish and get back in time to go to work. So. <sighs> so I just got to the field and they've done this again. Honestly, I don't know what it is. New fencing. Hi Alfie. Uh, fencing these days is just such rubbish quality timber. I bought this a couple of years ago and um, so yeah, so it's only about two years old max um and it just it's rubbish it just falls apart <laughs> actually quite happy because i don't have to top up the water for once i have spent the last few weeks um i have to carry my water from the trough that's over in that corner there by the red bucket um and it's a real labor every day to do it so um yeah it's really nice when they haven't drunk it all and i don't have to fill up four buckets worth of water by carrying small buckets over <laughs> So I just thought um, I'd show you the field. This was literally brown. The whole field was completely brown two weeks ago. Uh, like I say, we've now finally had a little bit of rain. Um, and I just wanted to zoom in because I think people sometimes think there's not really much grass. But if you zoom in, you can see, um, even though it's pretty bare, you've got all these lovely shoots of lush green grass. Um, a lot of this is where my hay feeders have been, so the seeds have fallen on the ground and then they've um, sprouted. So, um, yeah, you just really need to be careful this time of year with this weather about laminitis. Like, just really keep a close eye um, because this grass is quite, um, you know, it doesn't look like there's much there, but actually there's a lot more than you think and your horses are going to be eating that, um, you know. You think, you think they're not really grazing much, but actually because they're eating it down all the time, especially if they're out 24 seven, they're getting more grass than you think. And that is very, very high in sugar because it is so fresh and lush. So yeah, just worth being very careful. There's uh, Estrella and Lulu. So Estrella's my yearling. 
Um, she's gone a very bum high at the moment, so she keeps having little growth spurts, don't you? Yes. Um, and Lulu is my 22 year old New Forest pony, so she's looking really well for this time of year, so I'm pleased with that. Um, she can get a little bit porky at times, so. So I'm uh, really pleased with how much the grass has grown back in this top paddock. This is actually my little riding area. Um, I've not been able to use it over the drought because it just got so dry it burnt off uh, and I actually had a lesson here and my instructor and I were like is he lame or is this, he just felt really odd um, and it was only when I watched my Pivo footage back I realised that his shoes had got so sort of smooth from the hot, you know, walking around on the hard ground and then the grass was so dry in here it was literally like sort of dry coconut matting he was actually skidding on every single stride <laughs> so um i've had to not be riding in here for quite a while but i rode in here last night properly for the first time in a while and uh, we actually managed to canter because it was um soft enough underfoot now the grass has come through a bit and um it's not slippery so yeah i'm really glad that that's come back a bit so it's 10 o'clock and we're due there at half past um only about 15 minute uh, ride away but anyway he's got his um, boots on just to travel I just put brushing boots on him to travel so um, he's always a little bit fractious when he knows he's going out in the lorry as you can see but um, anyway I'm gonna grab him load him and we'll get there a little bit early hopefully but um, see how we go right so we are loaded went in very nicely for me and um, just that's him in the back there on the camera and we are going to leave now Yeah, he was looking really sleepy a second ago, and now he's suddenly woken up again. <laughs> I think he kept coming out of the sedation really quickly last time, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he was <laughs> Not more sedation now. Looking a bit sleepier now. Sleepy Elfie. Yeah. Oh, oh. we're going over. <laughs> So what's this to do, just to get rid of any particles of hay or? Yeah, absolutely, just to get rid of any food that's still in his mouth that he's saving for later, just so we can get a proper look yeah. at the surface of his teeth. And it also means when we come to rasp them, you're not getting food caught up in the rasp. Yeah. Right. So obviously that's where the Velcro goes. So often they're just slightly more restricted that way. And ah, so okay. Cheek. Where is that up towards the top hinge of the gag? Yeah, yeah that wouldn't that wouldn't be where his nose band is. That would be more. Well, not horizontally round anyway. It would be the fly veil. Yeah. One at the front and the back of the teeth, the rostral and cordial lymphatic And then we're looking at the dark brown areas, which are the pulps. Mm -hmm. So they should be, there's about five per tooth pulps. We have an extra one on the front tooth and an extra one on the back tooth. And we're just checking that there's no cavities in any of those pulps that would indicate the tooth, that pulp was dead or the tooth potentially is infected. Yeah. We've got problems going on. So we've still got a little bit of food there. And then we're just looking at the cheek. So that's an enamel point. This is the enamel that they use to chew with um, and grind their food. But in horses, 
Where they're fed on lovely soft pasture and soft food, they don't wear away as much. Um, and also we then strap bridles onto their heads, nosebands and things, which can push the cheeks up against these enamel points and, and cause rubs and sores. So it's yeah. those enamel points that we're rasping okay. away or just profiling so they don't do but we've got no ulcers. Mm -hmm. Good set of teeth, arcade one, we're going to arcade two. We've got a slight wear. This pulp is slightly lighter in colour and the front of the teeth is slightly smoother and that's where he plays with the bit. The okay, so that's bit. where so he's grabbing it and wearing it away a bit. Right, okay. Yeah, we're just looking at these lovely, normal, creamy coloured infundibulum. We can get cavities developing those and that's when we advise that we do restorations and fillings to reduce the chance of those teeth fracturing and those cavities getting bigger. Mm -hmm. So would you maybe advise a change of bit shape or is that just something that's, that's still just not something. always... So you could use a softer metal. You can see on this side these sharper enamel points that were rasped Ooh, yeah. profile. Mm -hmm. But they're not causing any problems on the cheek yet. Right, okay. But if you'd left it another six months, yeah, they'd be that rubbing. Yeah, would be and... sharp. And, yeah, okay. You can use a softer, a softer metal so the metal of the bit wears away rather than the tooth. Mm -hmm. There's our little bite where he's just bitten his cheek at some point. That oh, little yeah. bruise. And these lower teeth, they get the sharp enamel points on the inside adjacent to the tongue, but they very rarely cause a problem because the tongue isn't strapped up against them. Mm -hmm. Does he have a particularly big tongue? Or? No, I'd no. say. Mm -hmm. Points. Checking the pulps. Lower teeth don't have infundibuli. They're a bit smaller and narrow and have a greater infolding of enamel yeah. for their grinding surface. We're just checking those pulps. And they're all okay, so he's got a very good mouth. It's going to be a very routine rasp and profile. Good yeah. to know after last time. <laughs> <laughs> I know how he feels because I just had a wisdom tooth out about three weeks ago as well. So. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> and then local or GA? Oh, just local, yeah. It's only one of the top ones. You know, some people are in wisdom teeth now and they're in full GA. And... Oh no. No, I was like fine by the next day. <laughs> to get over the um, sedation. He's starting to wake up a little bit now, so hopefully he'll be okay to travel home in a few minutes and then I can get back and uh, get on to work. So um, that all really um, went nicely to plan. 
So I'm quite pleased that his teeth didn't have any um, sort of really sharp teeth um, and that he behaved really nicely as well because he didn't have a very nice experience having that wolf teeth out last year. So um, yeah, I think he behaved really well. So I um, travelled him home, took his hay net out just because he's still a little bit under the sedation, um, but not too bad. But yeah, there he is. He's um, he woken up a bit now, mate. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm really pleased with how that went. And um, just popping back in the field now and happy to see his girls back again. Right then, coming out. Can't have that. Come on. <laughs> come on. Oh, the girls are waiting for him to come back in. You've been a good boy, haven't you? Yes. So I really hope you enjoyed coming along um, with us for that little vet appointment. Uh, I'm very pleased with how it went. Elf was very well behaved. I was worried after last year with this horrible tooth extraction that he was going to be quite stressy about it, but the two doses of sedation worked nicely and he behaved um, very calmly actually. So I was quite pleased with that because I know, I know the girls really struggled with him last year with this tooth extraction. Uh, he just was very guarded about having his mouth touched and even with the sedative, he just, you know, wasn't happy about it. So he did really well today, um, or yesterday, should I say. Um, and um, yeah, I'm really pleased with um, how the team dealt with everything as well. I, I, the vets I use are really great. They always do a fab job and I always trust them. If I ever need to leave my horses there for any reason overnight or whatever, um, I know the vet nurses are all absolutely lovely as well and they treat the horses so nicely. So I'm always, you know, indebted to them and happy with the treatment that I get there and that the horses are well looked after. Um, and uh, I just wanted to point out with dental treatment, just check your insurance policy. Dental treatment is generally not covered on insurance policies because it is deemed to be an existing problem. So last year when we had this wolf tooth removal um, and it turned out to be a lot more difficult than we were expecting initially before they did the x-rays, um, it, it did cost quite a lot of money to have that removed. Worth every penny, of course, because he's very much um, com more comfortable now since it's been removed. Um, but it was quite a shock to the system to get the bill um, or, you know, find out that it was going to cost more than we expected once we sort of started delving into uh, x-rays and things. So um, I would really recommend, I know everyone's struggling for money. I'm struggling for money as well. Um, but if you can put a tiny little bit of money aside in, an, in a different account or something every month, just if you aren't covered for dental treatment on your insurance policy, it's always good to have a little bit of um, spare savings tucked away for something like that because, you know, uh, if your vets aren't willing to do a payment plan or you don't have a credit card you can put it on, then, you know, you're a bit stuffed. So, yeah, I'd really recommend trying to put um, a little bit aside if you can afford to just for any emergencies like that that your insurance might not pay out on. Um, I don't think everybody knows about that. So, yeah, just wanted to point that out. Um, and um, yeah, just a big thank you to Amy and the team for everything and uh, for letting me film and to, well, especially to Amy for doing a great job of talking through what she was doing and explaining everything. So um, I hope you learned something. I know I definitely did. Uh, and also it's really nice that Amy did point out that she drives past my field quite often and she said how happy and um, calm and, you know, like relaxed as a herd my horses seem. So that was really lovely to hear because my horses obviously live out 24 seven. My facilities are not particularly amazing. And, um, you know, it's really nice to hear from a vet that your horses are coming across as looking well looked after and happy. So yes, I was really pleased to hear that. So yeah, um, I might do a vlog in at some point soon about moving my horses from being living in to out. Um, my thoroughbred always lived in before and I have to say she's been a lot healthier since she's been out. So I will probably do a vlog about that soon. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the dental trip and I will catch up with you all soon. Bye.